Welcome to part 2 of ECFM tutorial. In the previous part we've uh, seen how to install it and how to create our first blueprint but we didn't get it to fly just yet uh, because well we had zero lift and today we'll try to fix it. Now before we even start doing that um, we need to ensure that our airplane is pointing correct and forward. Now that's what stability is for. Let's put some numbers in there. Um, now as you can see we have uh, three basic numbers that's pitch stability, yaw stability and roll stability and also optionally some curves that can uh, control how uh, they vary based on uh, angle of attack and slip angle. We are not going to use those today. Let's just put some simple numbers in there. Just by intuition, let's say pitch stability will be 3. Same goes with yaw and 1 for roll. And let's see what happens if we try to simulate it. Well, it's pointing right way forward. However, it's oscillating. To reduce oscillations, we're gonna need to use so some damping. Now, damping uh, works best if we use quite low numbers, something like 0.01. Let's put it there. Now, there, there's an uh, option to use uh, linear stability and linear damping. Uh, if you activate those, uh, this uh, strength of uh, stabilization and damping will vary with airspeed linearly instead of uh, squared. Uh, this is not realistic. However, if you are making like uh, an arcade game or something that uh, needs to be more intuitive instead of realistic, you can activate those. I'm not going to do that. And let's see what happens now. As you can see, it's no longer oscillating. However, we're still not flying. We gonna need to finally add some lift. Our lift in ECFM is controlled by a, a curve which looks kind of like this and um, it controls a relation between the amount of lift and uh, angle of attack. In uh, other words, uh, if you are flying at zero AOA, lift will be zero. Well, I didn't quite center it. Will be zero. And as you can see, as it increases, so does lift until we uh, get to a point where it begins to stall and it's going to decrease and there's going to be one secondary bump and as you reach 90 degrees, in other words, if you're flying flat against the wind, uh, lift will be zero again and uh, this part is actually if you were somehow managed to fly backwards there's still going to be some lift, however, the wing will be not as efficient. Same goes for negative angle of attack. Uh, of course, if you have a negative AOA, uh, the lift will be acting in the opposite direction. In other words, it will be negative. And same with the negative AOA, you can, of course, also stall and also fly in um, opposite direction which will uh, reverse the direction of lift again. So now that we have this curve we can apply it to the flight model like this and multiply. Let's uh, well this airplane uh, doesn't look like it will act very it will fly very well at low speeds, so let's put 0 0.1 as in 
well, it's going to have quite low lift uh, related to its mass. Now, uh, if we turned off scale with mass, uh, the higher the mass of the uh, aircraft, the higher the lift will have to be to maintain the same stall speed and so on. However, with this thing activated, the mass doesn't matter and we can use a low number like this. Let's see if it flies now. Oh, wait, it won't fly because we need to, one more thing. Uh, we need to ensure that uh, the angle of attack will not be zero. Oh, I've already set it up. So this is this is uh, trim. In other words, um, the angle at which the airplane will try to fly if you do not uh, add any control inputs. Oh, this is probably too high. Let's say uh, it will try to maintain three de degrees, and let's see what happens. And now it's slowly pulling out of the fall. Well, it almost flies. Oh, I didn't. I don't have collision set up. Sorry about that. It almost flies, but most likely I set lift too low. It's zero point three, let's say. And now. It's going faster. As you can see, we're moving seven, eight, nine thousand unreal units per second. But finally, finally, we're flying. However, there's a little problem. As you can see, the drag is zero, and we could effectively fly uh, forever. And that's of course not very realistic, so we need to add a bit of drag to the aircraft. Uh, I've already created a drag curve. Well, actually I copied it from my own game. It looks like this. Uh, of course, uh, this also controls how it uh, relates to, to angle of attack. As you can see, if we're flying straight forward, of course, the airplane is very aerodynamic, so the drag is low. And as the angle of attack increases, so does drag. And if we're flat against the wind, it's, of course, very high. So let's put it in our simulation. Let's say this. And multiplier will be 1. Let's see what happens now. And I don't know if the numbers in our debug are readable with YouTube's terrible video quality. However, as you can maybe see, the glide ratio of this airplane in its current configuration is 16 to 1. This is quite a realistic number. And as you can see, it doesn't fly infinitely, but it will eventually crash. Sorry about missing hitbox. Now, it will be quite nice if we could actually control how it flies. And uh, how to do that, we'll see in the next part. Before we finish, however, uh, there's a couple more options I probably have to explain. Uh, namely, it's the side lift and side drag. Now, uh, these, of course, uh, can create a sideways lift um, depending of uh, slip angle of the of the aircraft. And now, for the our conventional airplane, these would be quite low numbers, like 0, 0.0 something. However, if you are simulating something like uh, a missile or an arrow, you would want to add this as well. Uh, side drag actually can be added to our aircraft and 
but however some low number and uh, what this does is if the airplane is in a slip it will increase drag and lower the glide ratio and, um, and, and there are three more options that's additional drag this is just fixed number you can use it for example to let's say if you have an airplane with retractable gear if you extend the gear you can add some additional drag um, buoyancy now this can be used to like really simple simulation of a let's say a zeppelin or something like that and linear lift uh, just like with uh, linear damping and linear stability um, changes the lift algorithm to very linearly with airspeed this is less realistic however it's gonna give you uh, control over wider let's say range of airspeeds again uh, for like arcade games